Hey guys and welcome to East Coast Brewing. What are we doing tonight? Tonight I'm going to show you guys how to brew up a cheap Pilsner but really good. Okay, so what are we going to use? Well, we're going to use this here. It's the Beer Makers Pilsner. Now if you live in Western Canada you can get these for $14. That's five gallons. $14 at Superstore and no frills. So $14. So I've done this one before and actually it's really good. It's a really good Pilsner. Um, I like good Pilsner. But when I did do it, all I did was this. I did kit and kilo. So I did one of these and a kilogram of dextrose. So boom. And you know what? It was really good, but it was lacking something. It was lacking that a little bit of a bite at the end that you get from a, from a really good Pilsner. It was smooth, but it, would, yeah, it was lacking in a little bit of malty taste, right? So we're going to doctor this one up a little bit more tonight. And we're going to go with a kilogram of dextrose and the kit. But then we're going to add in 500 grams of light dry malt extract. What that's going to do is that's going to... Um, it's going to give it a little bit more body, a little bit more flavor, okay? It's also going to boost the alcohol a little bit too. Um, and then we're going to add in a half an ounce of Cascade hops. Now, we're just going to put them in a muesli bag, boil it up with our water, and then we're just going to leave it in there when it ferments. It's going to give it that extra bite at the end uh, from the hop flavor. And I really like Cascade hops, so that's what we're going to use. So, what's the cost behind all this? All right, we had 14 five dollars for the dextrose the kilogram of dextrose and it was about 250 for the 500 sorry no actually it was five dollars for the 500 grams of light dry malt extract so we are at what are we at 24 dollars and then 250 for a half an ounce so 26.50 and we're going to make 60 bottles of beer from this batch so that's a pretty good cheap pilsner and it's going to taste great with these ingredients so What next? Well, first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the kitchen, I'm gonna boil up two liters of water, and we're gonna throw our hops in the amusement bag and throw them in there as well, okay? And uh, then I'll bring that down here so we can continue the brewing process. We're gonna be using the Cooper's DIY kit today for this brew, so be right back. All right. We got our water boiled up and we are ready to go. I've boiled the hops as well. So I put half an ounce of those Cascade hops in a muesli bag and then I boiled them up in their own separate pot. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dump the water and the hop bag or the uh, muesli bag with the hops in it right in because it's gonna make a bit of a hop tea, okay? So first things first, we're gonna pour our two liters of boiled water into our fermenter. Ooh, that's hot. Then we're going to add in our kilogram of dextrose. Just like this. We're going to stir that up sanitized spoon. Now I sanitized all of my equipment today with star sand. Works really good. You don't have to rinse it or nothing. So, All right. That's already stirred up and ready to rock. Next thing is the dry malt extract. So we got our 500 grams of dry malt extract. I'll make sure you get all that out. There we go. We're going to stir that in. This stuff here doesn't break down as easily as the, uh, the dextrose, so you have to stir it a little bit longer. There we go. 
Then finally, a can of wort. So what I did is I soaked this in a sink full of hot water. To loosen it up because it loosens it up and then it makes it easier to pour out. Now this stuff's really thick, so you know what I do to get the rest of it out is actually boil up a kettle full of water, and then what we're going to do is put the kettle full of water in here, just to get all the rest of it out, because there's quite a bit that's left over in there because it's so thick. Just take a spoon, just stir it. I know you guys can't see it behind the, uh, the fermenter, but that's okay. Just give it a good stir to get all that the rest of that out of there. You never get quite all of it, but you get most of it. Now, always have your oven mitts. Don't try and grab the can with your bare hands because you're going to burn your hands. Okay. Here we go. Now, as you can see, we pretty much got all of it. All right, pretty easy stuff. You just kind of get this all mixed up with your uh, dry malt extract and your dextrose. And the next step on this is just to fill up to the 23 liter mark on your fermenter with ice cold water to cool the wort down before you pitch your yeast. So you know what, you guys don't need to see that in film, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get the rest of this and fill it up with cold water and then we'll be back for the next step. Okay, I got the fermenter topped up to the 23 liter mark. So we're just gonna give it a good stir. Do you wanna make sure it's good and stirred up? And then, we're going to take a hydrometer reading to see what our starting gravity is so we can calculate out how much alcohol is going to be in this. But it's smelling amazing. Alright, that's probably got it stirred up enough. Got the good old hydrometer. All right, we'll set that aside. I'll tell you guys, you know, it's got to settle down a bit because it gets kind of foamy on the top here. I'll show you. Right there, see how it gets kind of foamy right there? So we'll let that settle down. I'll tell you in the next part of the video what that reading is going to be. So now we're going to add in our, our hop. So you can't really see that, but that's all right. It's just a hop tea in the muslin bag. Boom, away she goes. And we're gonna check our temperature. Here we're sitting just above 72 degrees, so you know what? We're gonna go ahead and pitch our yeast. It'll be a perfect temperature. yeast you know what we're gonna stir that in real good some guys leave it just sprinkled on top I like to stir it in the instructions for this uh, beer makers Pilsner actually tell you to stir it in but there we go all stirred in 
Now we're going to close it up. And now we wait. So I'm guessing this will probably be done in about seven to ten days. So we're going to take a hydrometer reading and if we get the same reading two days in a row, then we know it's ready to bottle. So I'll be back to do the bottling with you. Cheers. Okay, it's been nine days. It's been nine days since we started this awesome Pilsner. Now, um, I tested the uh, the finishing gravity with the hydrometer, so I tested it two days in a row and it was at 1006. So that means it's done fermenting and it's time to bottle it. Now, so what's that mean? We started off at, it was around 1042 and we ended at 1006. So that calculates out to roughly around 4.7% alcohol. So not bad for a Pilsner. Um, I was kind of hoping for around the five mark, but you know what? We've primed our bottles with sugar to get our carbonation, so the remaining yeast, once it consumes that sugar, should produce a little bit more alcohol. I can't imagine it'll be too much more, but it might creep up to around the 4.9, but I don't know. Anyways, 4.7 is still gonna be really good. So what I've done is I've sanitized all my bottles. I use Star Sand for that, same as I did for when I was cleaning out the fermenter and all my equipment. And then what I've done, I didn't film it, Maybe I should have, I don't know. But what I did is I take take two teaspoons of dextrose, uh, dextrose corn sugar, same as we did for the, we were mixing this up, and two teaspoons in these, this size bottle. You can find the calculations online for depending on your size of bottle, but this is a 740 milliliter bottle, so it takes two teaspoons. And yeah, so I've put it, that in all of the bottles, and so we're ready to bottle. This here is an American Ale from Mr. Beer that I actually brewed up. As you can see, not a lot of head on it or anything. It's a pretty young one right now. I thought I would give one of the bottles a try. I squeezed the bottle, it seemed kind of firm, but, it's, but it needs to condition a little bit longer because the carbonation, it hasn't carbonated fully yet. So it's still tasty, it tastes really good. It's gonna be really good once it's fully conditioned. That video is actually on the channel already, so check that one out. Um, yeah, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, we're bottling, right? <laughs> Anyways, hey, so um, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out on the channel. Um, I did an unboxing of the Cooper's DIY kit. It is really awesome. But one little modification I did make, as you can see right here, I've got this tube. So it comes with basically a bottling wand that you stick on here. And it's got that little stopper in the end. In fact, actually, hold on, I'll show it to you. Uh, yeah, so it's got one of these. If you're, if you're probably familiar with these if you've been into home brewing, you know, you put your bottle on there, it depresses all the, you know, it comes out and then once you lift it, it stops. Well, you know what? I've had the same problem with most bottling wands. It doesn't always stop and it makes a mess. So what it is, I actually cut a piece of tube to fit in here. And basically what I do is I just fill them just like this. Works out great. So let's go ahead and start. So yeah, you just go like this and start filling them up. Basically, like if you've seen on the channel, it's basically the same as uh, using the Mr. Beer tap. And it seems to work out really well. I like it. This way I'm not making a mess all over the place. Boom, there we go, filled her up. Then we're gonna cap them and we're gonna wait. Um, I don't know how long I'll wait to, for these ones to condition. Um, I don't know, I've had some that have been ready to drink after seven days. So, you know what, I'll give, I might test one out in about seven days and see what happens. Take it for a spin, see what happens. But I'll be back after I finish filling these. You don't want to see me fill 30 bottles. I mean, that's pretty boring and they would make these videos even longer than they already are. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these all up and then I'll be back to, we'll do a taste test to see what it tastes like with this mixture we did. All right. Hey, what's happening? It has been nine days since we let this condition. It's probably ready to go. We'll see. Um, as always, like I said, it's probably going to get better as it ages, like in the next couple of weeks. But you know what? Nine days. Let's give it a try. Um, 
what more can I say about it? I don't know. Came in at 4.7% alcohol. That's pretty good for a Pilsner. It's going to be all right. I've chilled it overnight. So let's see what happens. It's got a little bit of to it. So we'll see how the carbonation is. Let's give the pour. Okay, that's looking pretty good already. Hold on a minute here, guys. There we go. Just had to adjust the uh, light there. So, still a little bit hazy. Um, so, that'll calm down in the next coming weeks here. But other than that, though, beautiful Pilsner color. Let's see here. Lighting here is kind of shit, so not bad. Wow. Smells really like a light, it's got a light malt aroma. Uh, definitely getting a little bit of those hops, but just a little bit, like not like an IPA or anything, just a nice, you know, the Pilsner kind, right? Well, let's take it for a spin and see what happens. Wow. Wow. Wow, carbonation is spot on. The mouthfeel is just, it's hard to explain. It's like everything has just come together. The body of it is, I'm really impressed by this. I've never been like straight up, boom, first sip and like, this is awesome, but this is awesome. I've had this Pilsner before, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of just straight up malt extract kits like we do, the hopped malt extract kits that we've been doing on the channel lately they do have a little bit of a hint of you can tell that they're a malt extract it's not a bad taste i really like it don't get me wrong like i actually like it but you can tell it's not like from a tap at a microbrewery or something like that this i kid you not taste like any pilsner that i've had at a brew pub like there that, that hint is not there at all and i've made this one before just kit and kilo so the only thing I can attribute to this, the difference would be we added that dry malt extract plus that half ounce Cascade hops. Like this, I encourage you guys. You're going to want to do this one. Not a lot of head retention. That's okay. You know, I didn't really expect that. Maybe um, as it ages, that'll come about. But honestly, if you guys can get the Beer Makers Pilsner, it's available in North America in, or not North America, um, Western Canada at Sobe, or not Sobeys, geez, maybe I should have a couple more, hey? Superstore and No Frills in Western Canada, you can get that. Uh, you might be able to get it somewhere else, I don't really know, but if you can't, you know what? Get your regular, like, get a regular, you know, five gallon kit can uh, of Pilsner, of, of maybe, you know, Muntins, um, Coopers, whatever you can get that's just a straight up Pilsner. Add that dry malt extract and half an ounce of Cascade hops. You're gonna love it. Like it's it's like this isn't even a, an extract brew. It is like it's a all grain brew. And that's only after nine days. Like wow, after nine days. It tastes like that so it's gonna taste a lot better in the next coming weeks I'd have to say this is probably one of the most successful extract Pilsners that I've ever brewed and I've brewed a few um, uh, all grain once I did one and then I did a couple of uh, partial extract um, Pilsners before and they turned out really like freaking awesome but this for the little bit amount of work and how cheap it was to make this it you know what, I think I don't think I would actually do an all grain 
or partial extract brew of a pilsner. I would do that. If I'm looking to make a pilsner, it's going to be this because it's like seriously so little work and so cheap to actually do. The partial extract one that I did cost me around $65 by the time I was done to actually brew a five gallon batch. This one was, you know, under $30. So, and like a quarter of the time. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Do this and hey, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody. Get them on the channel, man. We need to get to a thousand subscribers, you guys, okay? So we can monetize this. So I can start to you know, pay for some of the stuff that I do. Not like I want to make a million dollars or anything off of it. But hey, if I did, that'd be cool. Anyways, until next time, we got more coming at you soon. All right, so thanks for watching. Cheers.